this is Jurious Doctor, and today we're going to talk about mining. I know this video has been a long time coming, and uh, a lot of you have been waiting very uh, excitedly for me to talk about mining. I've covered a lot of the other core topics, and uh, really, mining is kind of a big part of being able to make an income in EVE. It's one of the first things people try, and today we're going to look at mining and also the ore vessels. By the way, this is an actual photograph of the Eagle Nebula taken by Hubble. It's about 7,000 light years from Earth. That's 442 million AU and a half uh, from where uh, from where we are now. And uh, look at that. That's just spectacular. Um, isn't space exciting? This is a core course, a core standing for capsular orientation related education. It's a curriculum created by EVE University, and the core classes are designed to help you as a new player gain some understanding of the game mechanics. The classes are designed to be easily understandable, include a visual guide, and will usually take 30 to 45 minutes to cover. Of course, the purpose of this being to make you a better capsuleer. The core classes library includes 18 classes which have been created for capsuleers to attend, observe, practice, and, uh, and, and generally learn from the EVE University uh, institution offers these classes live. Classes may be attended by any capsuleer and are advertised on EUNI's course calendar at calendar.eveuniversity.org. You can find the details for their Mumble server at tinyurl.com slash eunitechmumble. To attend a core class, just join the lecture.etechuni channel when it's time for the class to begin. Download and install Mumble uh, in advance of joining the class. Connect to the EVE University public voice server, the details are at the link provided, and follow EVE University's communications policy, which basically boils down to no swearing and don't be a dick. Now I'll be recording these classes so that those who are unable to attend a live class, whether for work or time zone or other commitments, you'll be able to follow along on YouTube. Big disclaimer alert here, <laughs> this is the first time I've had to make a disclaimer alert recording these classes. Um, EVE University is fantastic. The Unowiki is probably one of the best sources of information in the entire game, but their mining slide deck was a little bit lacking, so uh, I changed it. Ha! Ha ha! Go me! Um, we're going to start off with a quick introduction to mining. A um, big reason why I changed the slide deck was largely because it was missing answers to a lot of the questions I get asked on a daily basis by new bros and people who want to get into mining and understand a lot more about it. Now. Uh, mining is a big part of what I do because I do capital production and uh, I do a lot of other building. It took me a long time to building capitals. It took me a really long time to get into flying them. Um, and uh, I really appreciate sort of the process of making those things. And uh, I, I love helping new bros get into this. So we're going to cover a brief overview of the foundations of mining and talk a little bit about the NPC Corporation Outer Ring Excavations, also known as ore. We're going to talk about the key characteristics of ore ships and primary mining systems and boosts. We're going to talk about how mining works, how to produce profits, look at a fitting example, and talk about the ABCs of producing sales goods for market. We're also going to quickly touch on skill training. Now this overview should, by the time you finish this video, have familiarized you with the basics of mining. Uh, a quick brief history of mining. Mining is the bedrock of the EVE economy. Literally, without it, nothing else happens. If every Care Bear in all of EVE stopped mining today, by the end of the week, you would be begging them to go back to it. A, both for content and people to shoot at, but also for the fact that literally nothing would happen. Uh, CCP would have to step in and manually inflate the markets with you know modules so that PvP could continue. Um, while everything in EVE happens in service of PvP, uh, nothing in EVE happens without mining. And an example of that is from the monthly economic reports, or MERs. Uh, the daily production value in recent months has been about 5,430 billion ISK per day. The majority of that production came out of a value of 2,280 billion ISK worth of daily mined ore. That means that in mining, in EVE, high sec, low sec, null sec, wormhole, you name it, we are mining 2200 billion isk a day in ore and turning that into a profit of between four and 5400 uh 4500 billion isk per day in market value it's it's amazing how much happens in this game and that is actually up substantially uh from 3400 billion isk a day and 890 billion mined 
in March 2016. Now, one of the big changes that happened in between um, is that uh, Moongu, or the production of moon mining um, minerals and, and ores, uh, had been moved from a star-based process to a mining activity. So there's a huge injection there uh, as that now becomes a mineable substance rather than being passively collected through player-owned star bases. You can see your mining activity in your mining ledger. The mining ledger is a recent addition too. So you go to your Neocom, click on business, and then click on mining ledger. And you can actually look at a history of everything you've mined and how much um, how much money there is there in terms of, of profit that you've potentially earned. Um, high security and Sovnal are most heavily divided um, in terms of you know, where's the split on who mines the most? Solvnal is by far the most prosperous. In fact, you really you only need to look at Delve to see how much uh, a, a truly industrious group can take out of the game. Uh, props to Goons for being that hyper crab. Um, when it comes to the history of mining, in the not so good old days, mining used to take place in subcapital and capital ships, with battleships being one of the most common. Basically, you fit a whole bunch of minor twos to a battleship, you put it out in space, here's a picture of a roke, and you mine these rocks. And then what you would do is you would jettison the ore into space, and you'd have a hauler come pick them up. Outer Ring Excavations, or ore, um, is the largest independent mining corporation founded by Glentian Interests and has recently been purchased by the Apple Consortium, although for a while it was owned by Criminal Interests and has only recently been sort of purchased out by Apple. Uh, between mining and the production of citadels, um, engineering complexes and refineries, Apple Consortium is now the most powerful corporation or uh, coalition of corporations in New Eden. They are functionally a fifth faction. Or mining and innovation, um, or led the development of several classes of purpose-built mining vessels. So this is what allowed us to move out of mining and combat ships into mining and ships that were purpose-built to uh, maximize the, the volume of ore collected and this, you know, uh, additional purpose-built ships like salvaging ships and, and industrial command ships. And this change, this introduction, starting with the mining frigates and mining barges, really changed the shape and face of EVE, um, allowing for an exponential growth in the market, in production, and in PvP. This exponential growth uh, and this proliferation of industry has allowed EVE to become what it is today. Now, when it comes to getting started in mining, obviously you're going to want something to mine in. Um, you begin with all the skills you need to start mining, but not to do it well. You need something to mine with. You need mining lasers, um, which harvest ore, and there are other harvesters for gas and ice, but typically you're going to start with mining ore. Something to mine in, really any ship will do, but a mining frigate has an ore hold and is bonused for mining and harvesting resources, which means that it harvests more quickly, more efficiently, and it can mine more. You also need something to mine. Uh, what are you going to go out and harvest? You have to know what it is that you're looking for and what it is that you're going to take out. Now, you can warp to any asteroid belt anywhere in EVE and just start mining rocks, but that isn't necessarily always going to prove to be the most efficient way to make, um, to make money mining. Now, if you're going to continue on from there, you have two choices. You can choose to take the ore you've mined, reprocessed it, um, take it and reprocess it into the base minerals and then choose something to make which usually requires a blueprint and then um, that from there forward you're basically working in industry you're no longer in mining you're in production uh, the other option is that you take the ore that you've mined and you sell it either at market or to a business partner somebody that you form a relationship with who will buy your your minerals and ore from you at who then they themselves turn around and go and make something from it you're going to start with a venture, and the reason for this is that they're free. Uh, you can actually start at any one of the basic industry missions in any uh, high sec system, any system eight and above, find an academy or a school, and go to that station and talk to the industry agents, and guess what? You'll get a free venture, and you'll get the fit. But once you have one and you've mined for a while, or if you've done any decent amount of PvP and, and sold the loot, and made money, and you know, however you want to get into this. Um, once you have even a few million-esque, honestly, 
um, once you get into the street, ventures are cheap, like fully fit in, 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 you know, ventures. Any industrialist can pump up 50 of them at a time for way less than the material price of a single T1 battleship hull. Like legitimately pumping out dozens and dozens of ventures is so, so cheap and so easy. And they pay for themselves hundreds of times over. And the beauty of them is that um, they have a couple of benefits, which we'll talk in the fitting example about later. Um, they pay for themselves. You can mine the cost of a new venture in about an hour's effort. You can pay for a mining barge in about a week. Um, and actually, it's much less, much less than that if you're very serious about it. You can pay for a mining barge in a few days. Uh, a mining barge will pay for itself hundreds and hundreds of times over. And, and I'm really not joking there. Like, mining barges um, are still the way to go in most of Nullsec. You won't even need to get into Exumers uh, until you are in a place where the, you know, per percentile difference in improvement is worth the extra hundreds of millions of cost in the hull. And this is where we get into talking about joining a corporation. You will be safer and more efficient if you can mine with others and with the benefit of fleet support, mining boosts, which we'll talk about in a minute. Now, the Venture, beautiful little Tonka truck that it is. In fact, more than half of my Ventures are named Tonka for that very reason. Uh, maybe a, a hearkening back to my childhood in the 80s. Um, but it, it's more than just their distinctive yellow color we need to look at. We can talk about the distinguishing characteristics. And most warships have some variation of the following. They get a harvesting bonus, whether a direct bonus to harvesters or to drones. Most warships are bonus to gather materials for industry. There are a couple notable um, exceptions here. The, the first is the Bowhead, which is a capital ship designed for moving entire fleets of ships, uh, fitted ships, without having to repackage them. And uh, the other is the Noctis, whose bonuses are towards salvaging, so recovery of materials from destroyed ships or battles. All ore ships also gain a defensive bonus. Some favor shields, some benefit from uh, tougher drones, but all are hardened against predation by pirates, and that's because um, industry and mining are predominantly passive activities. And they all have an ore hold, uh, for the most part, with the notable exceptions of the Noctis and the... Um, and the bowhead as mentioned before. Now, the ore hold is what sets these vessels apart from other ships and combat-focused compatriots. The ore hold is a generic term. It is where any gas, ice, and ore mine can be held. And typically, the ore holds are cavernous. They're very, very, very large. They far outstrip the storage capacity of the T1 industrials. Um, and, and really, a lot of the uh, like mining barges, um, like the Retriever, have just absolutely huge ore holds. And all ore ships serve a special purpose. They're all niche in their own way. When it comes to mining modules and boosts, let's talk a little bit about how you actually go about mining. So the mining lasers are a combination of a laser array and a tractor beam. Basically, you're blasting the rock, literally cutting the ore out of the base rock, like melting it away, turning the rock to magma and leaving the valuable minerals and ores behind, and then tractoring it into your ore hold um, with a paired uh, beam that is both cutting and sucking at the same time. Gas harvesters are essentially a vacuum powered ram scoop. You fly through clouds of particulate matter and rare gases and you suck them into the hold and condense them, at which point they become something that you can sell and market, refine, uh, make drugs from all kinds of things. And then there's ice harvesters, which are uh, a more rarefied version of the laser beams that you use to mine rocks, except they operate in the visual spectrum and they, they're used to cut blocks of ice from the big ice belts in EVE. Um, and these blocks of ice are huge. They take a long time to cut, so you can't short cycle your lasers, meaning you can't turn them off and get a partial return. You have to finish cutting the block out so you can suck it into your hold. So um, cycle time is very, very important for ice harvesters. Um, the benefit of ice is that it contains a lot of liquid and gas products, which are very valuable in that uh, a lot of ships and um, stations and structures rely on as fuel. Now, when it comes to modules, all modules benefit from some sort of upgrade when it comes to harvesting. 
your base modules benefit from ships from your ships bonuses and your skills and the module itself will have its own benefit in terms of cycle time or volume that it collects you need skill books to train the skills for the individual um, harvesting types aside from basic mining so um, you know if you want to get better at salvaging you need to train salvaging up if you want to get better at uh, at extraction and you want to learn to start harvesting ice well you need to train ice harvesting uh, and the same goes for any drones that are that are related to these activities so mining drones and ice harvesting drones salvaging drones they all have their own skill books and enhancement modules and rigs so there are upgrade modules and jury rigging that further increase the efficiency of your base modules and ship um, you have a t1 a faction and a t2 version of basically every type of harvesting modifier and then there's fleet assistance so with like the orca the porpoise the workable you have the ability to receive mining boosts both t1 and t2 with different effects that um, improve the function of your harvesting modules over and above those bonuses provided by rigs and modules and enhancement modules and these improve the range of your lasers the cycle time of your modules and the preservation of charges so cycle time is really really important for ice mining and everybody will benefit from an increase in laser range because it means you can mine things that are farther away without having to fly towards them preservation of charges goes towards t2 modules which we'll talk about in a second Now, how mining actually works is that you need to get out there and get into a ship and go out and actually mine something. But you need to understand what it is you're going to be mining and how much you're getting and what efficiency is measured as. This involves a little bit of math. I'm going to walk you through it now. So the base yield is the amount of mining that the module can get by itself. And it's multiplied by the number of modules you have. So if you have two modules, twice as much volume. Your character skill bonuses will increase the efficiency of those modules, as will the ship's roll bonus, and any upgrade and rig bonuses that you add. Also, any burst effects or, or command boosts that you're getting from any uh, accompanying ships. And what you end up with is resulting yield in meters cubed. The cycle time, or how long, duration-wise, it takes each module to complete a full cycle, um, is used to to measure well how how much yield are you getting in that cycle time how much are you able to to harvest each cycle and then the material harvest um, is measured in a volume of meters cubed per unit so each unit of each different ore has a different size in terms of meter cubed um, some ores are very small and some ores are very very large so um, the, the more or less you mine of something, um, the more it'll take up in your ore hold. And different ores will occupy different volumes of space for the same cycle type. So a basic venture fit is a couple of minor ones, a mining laser upgrade, an afterburner or a micro warp drive. In this case, we're going afterburner, a uh, medium shield extender, and a survey scanner. Now the survey scanner is designed so that you can go out and you can pulse out a signal and what bounces back to the sensor tells your ship which ores are in which rocks and how much. So you're gonna undock, you're gonna right click anywhere in space and you're gonna warp to an asteroid belt. You can pick anyone you want off the list in your system. And when you land, you're going to burst your survey scanner. It's going to ping once. It's going to send out a, a shockwave of info. And that, you know, info pulse is going to pop back, feeding information back, like radar uh, or sonar. And it's going to say, here's the rocks I've found within range, and here's what's in them. And it's going to pop up as this info window that you can look at, and you can expand the individual uh, groups to see how many rocks, how much ore. Now, it does give you a numbered identification of how many rocks are in range and the typical range for a survey scanners um, I believe 25 kilometers so you know here we're sitting in a, in a fairly tight anomaly um, and you may not see all the ores that are named here some of these are, are null sec only ores um, but if you're starting off in high sec chances are you're going to see Veldspar, Scordite uh, and maybe Plagioclase or you know Peroxeries and then you're going to start mining you're going to pick a rock and you're going to orbit it and you're going to turn your lasers on and then we're going to do some maths about 
you know, how much yield an unrigged T1 Venture piloted by Brand New Alpha can get without using mining drones. So again, we're going to go back to this idea of yield. Your yield equals the number of modules that you have by your skills times by your upgrades. And then that whole number is multiplied again by the roll bonus of the ship. And the reason for that is the roll bonus of the ship is often fixed. Like it'll be a 100% bonus or maybe a 500% bonus. But you'll get a flat bonus to your mining yield based on the roll of the ship, depending on which ship you're in. So let's break this down. So if you've got a minor one and you have two of them, well, you need to count for the volume of the two minor ones. If your default mining level is four, which it is when you start the game, and you train a single level of mining laser upgrade one, well, you've got the base benefit from that and your mining return at 5% per level for mining four. And then you take that whole amount once you've added that all together and multiply that by 100%. So if the yield amount is M, meaning number, and that's measured in M3 for every 60 second cycle, we're looking at how many meter cube can we get in a single 60 second cycle, which is how long a base minor one takes to run. Well, each minor one can collect 40 meters cubed every 60 seconds. So if you multiply that by two, you get 80. If you take the 20% because it's four levels, 5% per level of mining four, and you add that to the 5% bonus you're getting for a single la a level of mining laser one upgrade from your mining laser upgrade one module, what you're gonna get is an amount that yields out at about 200, 200 meter cubed every 60 seconds. So every 60 seconds, your unrigged, basic setup, cheap ass venture is going to pull in 200 meter cube of whatever it is you're mining every minute and that's your volume in, M in m3 now again different ores have different meter three uh, or cubic meter measurements um, in this case veldspar were one of the most common ores in all of eve uh, containing the most common mineral in all of eve which is titanium uh, takes up one decameter that is, is 10 centimeters cubed for every unit that you mine. So uh, approximately four inches on a side, if you're American, so or British. So a four inch cube of ore gets mined out every 60 seconds by your ship. Unless it's scordite, in which case the blocks that you're mining are slightly bigger. Scordite is about five and a half inches on a side or 15 centimeters on a side. So you're getting a slightly bigger chunk of ore. Now, in the same 60 seconds, you're still getting 200 meter cube of whatever that is, but that 200 meter cube is broken down into a number of units based on the size of each unit of ore. So in a single 60 second cycle, you can pull in 2000 Veldspar but if you're mining scordite, you can only pull in 1,333 because the scordite takes up more space. Now let's talk about profits. How do you make money mining? Well, first, here's some handy resources. The first one's Evepraisal, which is a site you can use to copy and paste the contents of your inventory uh, to in text format. Um, your inventory has to be in detail view, meaning that you're looking at it like text rows. Um, and once you paste that into your appraisal and choose the market you want to sell at, it'll tell you what the average buy and sell prices are for your list of goods. Then there's evecost.eu. Evecost has a lot of useful tools, including a reprocessing calculator, market lookups, uh, blueprint calculators, and so on. And then there's ore.surless.de slash ore. Now you can just type in ore.surless.de and it'll take you directly to it. It's a German site. Uh, the site's in English. Um, it's used pretty much every minute by miners all throughout EVE. Uh, and it's probably the single best site for information on ores, their market values, what you get out of them, what areas of space they're found in. And really, if you want to go mining, you pretty much need to bookmark that site or have it tattooed on the inside of your eyelids. Now, if you want to sell your mining proceeds, in one hour, let's say you were just mining Veldspar, 
you'd bring in 120,000 units of feldspar in one hour of mining if you're really on the ball and you're mining that whole time, if you're at peak efficiency. So in an hour of mining, you mine 120,000 units of feldspar. Now, what if you go and make something from it? Let's pick something easy like Amar shuttles. So each Amar shuttle takes 2,501 of those 120,000 units of feldspar. Um, if you refine, sorry, uh, 2,501 units of tritanium, which you'd get from refining feldspar. Each time you refine a load of an hour's mining of Veldspar, you get 340,000 tritanium and change. That's if you have max skills. Um, but let's say that you, you spend a week training the skills required to reprocess it, and you go to a public facility and you reprocess it at an upper structure. So you've taken your reprocess order and now you start making more shuttles. So divide 343,000. 483 divided by 2501 and you're left with a remainder of 137. You can make 137 MR shuttles in an hour of mining. Now, why is this important? Why am I making you do math? Nobody really likes math. Well, actually, that's not true. I love math. There's a lot of people like math, but nobody really wants to do it on a daily basis. This is why this game starts getting called spreadsheets in space, because people need to track this stuff. How efficient are they being? You need to start thinking about how can you game the game to get better at what you're doing? How can you extract a higher profit? It's very Marxist. So let's say that your 120,000 units of Veldspar has a current market value in GDA of about 2.1 million. So sure, you can take that hour of mining and go make 2 million isk, but honestly, if you wanna make 2 million isk, go rat. But if you make something and then you sell it, well, that same amount of mining gets you an extra 500,000 isk. That's not too bad. Now, Amar shuttles aren't actually the best place to make your money. This is just an example for the purpose of the maths because making Amar shuttles is simple. A lot of people will start by getting blueprints for ammunition and other high movement, high demand commodities that are on the market. And they'll start making those and selling to the markets nearby that need them. They'll identify what the gaps are, what's not available on market, and they'll start making those and then seeing what sells. And if something sells very quickly, they start making a lot of that thing. And as long as they're not gouging people on the price, forcing people to go to Jita or the next largest market to get it cheaper, you can make a lot of money. But often it's like running a grocery store. You're making a money based on the volume that you're able to sell. Each individual thing you're selling isn't worth a lot by itself. It may not be worth a whole lot more than it costs you to make it, but when you sell a lot of that thing, like grocery stores selling heads of lettuce, each lettuce head might cost the store 17 cents, but if they sell it for 60, every single one they sell is making them money. So you really need to, to, to think about where are the gaps, where are the opportunities for you to make money as a miner and as an industrialist. And remember that no market is ever too small. Um, here's a beginner fitting for that same venture that I described with the details. Uh, and there's the fit. I'm going to leave this up for a second so you can record this. Pause it, come back and watch it again if you need to write this down. When it comes to scaling up your enterprise, you're going to want to get into a bigger ship with better lasers, better efficiency, and again, mine in a fleet with corp mates. Get into a corporation where you will be safe to mine or that, you know, they themselves are miners and learn from people who do this already. They'll help you with the spreadsheets. They'll help you with the math if they're not complete dinks. You know, just learn it and do it. And the thing nice thing about mining is that mining is extremely passive. As long as you're paying attention to your screen and you're not, you know, going to get caught with your pants down and get dropped on and get killed, you can really just mostly chill out. Watch the screen, click rocks, mine them. When that rock disappears, click on new one, press mine. It's very zen. It's like raking a garden of stones. You know, it's it's right in there with meditation. It is very, very zen to mine. It's a lot of people find it very uh, rewarding to do when they're studying, when they're working on homework, when they're doing work reports, when they're monitoring somebody's paying off their computer on the network, whatever the case is, whatever you do for work or life, mining is something you can do that's a little, very low stress and very low engagement. And when it comes to really upscaling, you need to think about, well, what are you gonna do with your mining in terms of where you spend your time? Where's the best place to extract a profit when you are mining? And for that, I give you this little mnemonic here. 
the ABCs of producing sales goods for the market. And really you have to think about it like the right tool for the right job in the right way. To increase your efficiency, output, versatility, and survivability, there's a number of things you can do. The first is train the related skills. There are reprocessing skills for each type of ore in the game. If there's an ore that you want to mine because you need the mineral out of it, then you're going to need to train the skill to reprocess it, or you're going to need to find somebody who has those skills and get them to do it for you. Eventually, you'll start producing at a level where it won't make sense to use somebody else and to keep those costs for yourself, uh, save that you know money and, and, and uh, apply it elsewhere, and you'll just refine it yourself. But training those skills takes a little bit of time, and that's one of the best places where you can improve your efficiency. So train your related skills on mining, train your upgrade skills, train your ship piloting skills, train your you know mining frigate and mining barge skills. Everything you do that moves you closer is time well spent. Get a better ship. Get a ship that helps you mine better. Get a ship that helps you mine more. Helps you, helps you to mine more efficiently or salvage more efficiently. Get better equipment. As your skills develop, you'll be able to start using Faction and T2 modules. You'll be able to get into being able to leverage those uh, modules in a way that improves your efficiency and, and improves your outcomes. And of course, you're going to want to upgrade your ship. Getting into jury rigging. Train the jury rigging skills. So important because it cuts down on the side effect of using rigs. Um, and really, every inch of benefit that you can get ultimately moves you forward. Using mining crystals and T2 mining lasers. Um, T2 mining lasers are unique that they use ammunition. The T1 mining lasers and strip miners do not. Um, the benefit of using mining crystals is that it gives you a huge benefit in the particular type of ore that you're mining, provided you have the matching type of crystal. And use skill hardwiring, mining, and support implants where they apply. Now, Hardwiring, mining, and support implants, these are plugins. These are cybernetics. They require the use of the cybernetic skill, which I, before you start any of this, I recommend you train to at least level four. Um, it's a very, very short train and super, super useful. And basically you buy a piece of cybernetics and stick it in your head. And they give you benefits. Now, receiving boosts from an industrial command ship also helps because it's a force multiplier. It'll add somewhere between 10, uh, 10, 25, or even 60% increases in your overall output, depending upon um, what combination of boosts are being used. So going back to the cybernetics for a second, there are four types of related cybernetics that are used in mining and resource processing. There's the Amici, Highwall, Yeti, and Bean Counter. Now, the Yeti is used for ice mining and the bean counter is used for reprocessing. I believe the bean counter gives you a, a base 3 or 5% benefit in your ore reprocessing. Now, when you're reprocessing a lot of ores and you're reprocessing a null sec and you're dealing with some of the rare ores, a 5% difference is huge. You could be talking about hundreds of millions of ISK. So, definitely something you want to invest a little bit of money in. Now, of course, when you have an Orca or another ship providing you boosts, what kind of boost do you get? Well, Laser Field Enhancement has a base value. This is not counting the pilot skill who's providing the boosts um, or the type of boost level that they're using, but they provide a base 30% increase to laser range. Laser Optimization shortens the cycle time by 15% base value, and Equipment Preservation makes the durability of the mining laser crystals 15% um, better. So they'll last 15% longer. They degrade 15% uh, less quickly. Now, how do you know which ship to move up into? Well, here's a quick graph to help you understand how you can progress up through the ship types up into exhumers. So at the bottom there, you can see it says venture in gray or sort of a tan, uh, procure and retriever in blue and coveter in gold. Those are your mining frigate and then your mining barges. If you move up into your expeditionary vessels, which are the T2 mining frigates, you have the prospect, which is used for mining ore. Then you have in the exhumers, the skiff and the Mackinac and the Hulk. Now, as you move up this list, you'll notice, um, perhaps curiously, that the only place in this entire graph and this is a fairly current graph, where faction modules 
outstrip the T2 variants is at the frigate level. Now, the faction modules are also incredibly expensive compared to the minor twos. Like if you wanted to get yourself an ore mining laser, they're they're pricey unless you fly to outer ring, buy the blueprint, and make them yourselves. Um, they're they're still going to be very pricey. Um, but an EPS particle uh, or, or or particle bore mining laser um, will do just fine. In fact, those meta mining lasers actually outperform minor twos, whether you're an adventure or whether you're in a prospect. Um, now those particular mining lasers drop as loot in low sec. Um, so they fall a lot, they get sold a lot, you'll find them in the market, they're not very expensive, they're supplied very, very quickly to the market, and I would recommend, um, even if you're just getting started, even if you get your minor freeze, your minor ones free from um, your initial missions, as soon as you can afford to do so, buy some of the meta modules and put them on there. Don't necessarily go to faction, don't go to the ones with a little green, you know, circle in the corner of the, uh, of the icon, just go to a meta module but don't start with minor ones. Go one step up, you will thank me later. Now, moving from a venture to a prospect is, it's a big significant um, increase in price. You need to train your skills longer. You need uh, venture level five and then expeditionary frigates at least level one. Um, but the, the increase is nowhere near as great for a 60 million in jump in price as going to a procurer. You can get into a procurer or a retriever for about 20, 30 mil um, on average, maybe fitted. Um, and just a, a T1 procurer or retriever, strip miner ones, will vastly outperform your venture. You will notice a big increase in your pull. Um, the advantage to the procurer is that it's extremely tanky, which is why they're favored in Nullsec. The retriever has a very large ore hold, but it doesn't mine very quickly. It mines far quicker than Adventure, um, and it also means that you can go back to station less frequently to drop your ore off. Getting into the Coveter. Coveter is something you want to fly when you have support ships or you have a dedicated hauler taking your ore to station for you, because the Coveter mines really, really, really quickly and mines a lot, but it has a tiny ore hold, comparatively. And in fact, its ore hold is smaller than that of the Venture. So you're going to be jettisoning your hold your whole hold but every two minutes and 30 seconds so um, unless you have a industrial command ship to dump that ore into or a hauler waiting nearby to pick it up and run it back to station typically you're going to want to stick with a procurer or retriever when you're first getting started in mining barges from there you can move up into exhumers and improve your efficiency as you go now obviously each of the different levels of um, of module will improve your efficiency the higher you go again with the exception of the the mining frigate level and whether it's strip miners ice miners um, you have the option at the t2 level of using um, crystals for ores to improve the output even above what you would get with just the base module one note here that's really important to make is that you'll notice on the chart there that for the the exhumers and the mining barges strip miner two dash empty is the lowest value in each of those groups of columns and the reason for that is that t2 strip miners only work well if they have crystals even just t1 crystals which is why you have columns says t1 crystal if you use a strip miner two empty on a barge you might as well get back into adventure you're going to mine faster in adventure now, ABCs of producing sales good for market is a mnemonic designed to help you remember which ores you should be mining if you're gonna be selling directly to market or if you're gonna be producing in a large scale. And those letters are short for Arcanor, Bista, Crokite, Dark Ogre, Nice, Plagic Laser Peroxeries if you're in low sec or high sec, or Spodamine if you're in null, and Mercoxid. And, and, and you can see here the corresponding minerals that you get out of each of them. Spotamine is always going to be the favorite because you get more minerals out of it and you get a higher volume, which is why Nullsec is beating everybody else out for the volume of ore mined and the value of ore mined. Uh, a stands for Arcanor, B for Bistit. You can see these are both Nullsec ores. Same goes for Crokite, 
Now, the, these, the, these are often called the ABCs. If you want to mine, mine your ABCs. When they say that, they're talking about Arcanor, Bista, and Croquet. These are only available in Null. If you need to produce on a large scale, you need the minerals these provide, and you need to get them, which is why people talk about mining the ABCs. Then there's Dark Ochre. If there was a D on the list, it would be Dark Ochre. Uh, Dark Ochre provides you uh, isogen, although if you're mining Spa Domain, you should have more than enough isogen from that. If you need to fill in any gaps, that's when you'll go out and mine Dark Ochre. So it is a whole lot less frequently mined, uh, especially in smaller alliances or in groups where there's fewer miners. Then there's Plagioclase and Peroxeries. Now these are found in different uh, regions of space, so um, whether you're in Galantean space or Kaldari space, Omar or Mimitar, you'll find um, one of these two ores in high sec and low. When you get into null sec, you're going to find spa domain, and that's pretty much everywhere. Uh, Spod is the lifeblood of industry in EVE. Mine it, mine it, mine it. Compress it, sell it at market, make stuff from it, but don't ignore Spod. Spod is God. Then there's Nice. Now, Nice is also a null sec or uh, Nice is the next thing that you immediately mine after Spod. And the reason for that is because there is a huge Mexilon bottleneck in EVE. Uh, everybody needs Mex. Uh, you don't get nearly enough Mex out of Plagioclase, Peroxeries, or Spodamine. Yeah, you'll get a lot, but it's not enough. Blueprints disproportionately uh, call for Nice. Um, at a ratio way outside of, of what is provided for by the base minerals um, that you get out of your, your, your primary ores. And I think that's by design. I think that's so that you, you can't just mine spot and then ignore you know the rest of your lower level uh, minerals. Uh, you'll notice here also that Scordite and Feldspar are not on here. The reason for that is that um, Plagioclase, Peroxeries, and Spodamine you get Tritanium and Pyrite there, and those are the primary uh, outputs from Veldspar and Scordite. Um, so why would you mine high sec ores when the null sec and low sec ores outperform them and give you more? It just doesn't make sense. And finally, the last one is Mercoxit. Now, Mercoxit's a special, special little snowflake. You need a whole lot of mining skills and a whole lot of refining skills to even get into mining Mercoxit. It requires its own special lasers, its own special crystals, its own special mods and rigs. And the beauty of it uh, is that when you mine it without those things, it creates a toxic cloud that burns your ship and potentially explodes, killing you. Um, Mercoxit is, you know, very, very, very... Uh, excitable. Um, let's let's just say it's a it's a reactive material, and um, uh, while it's you know got its challenges in mining it for the morphite that comes out of it, morphite is a requirement for T2 production. You literally can't make T2 modules or ships without morphite. So uh, thank you to everybody who mines Mercoxid. It's also the most expensive mineral in game without getting into the moon ores, and honestly. Uh, if you want to make money, if you really want to focus on selling to market, uh, you're going to focus on these ones here with the Plex symbol. You'll notice that I didn't put one on Nice. Um, that's because Nice is more of a benefit to specific industrialists. Cap builders need Nice like nobody's business. If you want to make a lot of money and you don't have a lot of skills, but you have an area where you can get you know decent sized concentrations of Nice, start by mining that but you're eventually going to want to move into the ABCs and spot. Now, when it comes to skills, your skill training queue should look like this for your first 30 days. Spaceship Command 4, Industry 2 through 5, Mining 4, Astrogeology 1 through 4, Mining Frigate, frigate up to level uh, 3, Mining Barge level 1 through 5, Astrogeology 5, Exumers 1 through level 3. Now that'll get you into Exumers. That'll get you into a Mackinac or Skiff. And uh, while you can probably leave that last one out and swap out that 19 hour train for mining drones or for combat drones so that you can be a little bit more defensible against um, pirates, really for the most part you won't need drones right away um, if, you don't, if you don't already have the skills for them because of the fact and this is this is important to remember if you're in a venture you have a base default 
plus two warp stabilization built into your ship, which means that if somebody just points you with a warp disruptor, you can still warp off. You can get away. There's nothing stopping you. If somebody hits you with a scrambler, a warp scrambler, and you're in a frigate, just warp off. Unless they've got a faction scram, or they're using a heavy scram on a larger ship, they're not going to be able to hold you down. Now, if somebody's got two scrams because they're hunting people who are mining, then it's possible they will be able to hold you down. But if you lose the ship, no biggie because they're super cheap and you can just build yourself another in like five minutes. So what you're going to do is whenever you're in a venture and you're mining and a PvP -er lands on you and they try to warp disrupt you, don't panic. Either die or warp off. Those are your options. No need to get butthurt about it. No need to get angry. All those guys in code and other high sec ganking groups who love to go after miners, they're just looking for you to get butter. They're looking for your salt. Don't give it to them. Also, if anybody ever tells you that you have to pay for a mining permit, there is a place somewhere in Alaska that I hear has some lovely beachfront property that I would love to sell you. If you buy into that bullshit, don't, just don't. Just warp off, find another place to mine, and if they keep bugging you, dock up for a while, and they'll get bored and they'll go away and they'll go harass somebody else. You do not need to buy a mining permit. If you buy a mining permit, you're an idiot because somebody else is just going to come along and fleece you. It's a shakedown. Don't do it. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this video so far. Um, if my videos are helpful to you and you like the content I'm producing and you want to, you know, ask a question or you have any questions about future videos or you want to see me make a particular video, please feel free to do the doobity doo, you know, put some comments in the, in the comment section below, um, send me a message in game, contact me on discord, tweet me, you know, I'm basically available everywhere. Uh, you can email me at juriusdoctor at gmail.com. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm eminently available. So if you have any questions at all, I'm happy to help. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, if you like my video, please toss me a like, let me know, and uh, have a great rest of your day. This is Cheerios Doctor. Cheers.